Alright, welcome back. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. Today's topic has been lung cancer and we had a very interesting discussion with Dr. Toh Laiman, the consultant clinical oncologist and also the vice president of Lung Cancer Network Malaysia. Doctor, very interesting conversation we've had so far. Let's move on into how is lung cancer diagnosed or what are the symptoms that patients actually go through before coming to see The symptoms of lung cancer uh, can be a cough, uh, pain in the chest region, a coughing up of blood, mm -hmm. a loss of weight. Um, but, but the symptoms I've just mentioned actually can be confused yeah. with very day-to-day -day, yeah, um, It's actually very general conditions. Yeah. Yeah. So there isn't one particular symptom that differenti differentiates it out from a chest infection or tuberculosis and, and so forth. Perhaps the only thing that may be slightly different is that it's a, it, there are symptoms which don't go away with treatment. So for example, you've been to the GP once or twice for causes of antibiotics and the symptoms persist, then I think it's probably time to get an x-ray done or see a specialist. Mm -hmm. So when a patient comes in saying that they have the symptoms, what are the type of procedures that you guys do? Probably the most common procedure that is done is an x-ray mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to detect uh, any changes in the lung. However, x-ray is not the, the best way to pick up lung cancer. Mm -hmm. You probably need a CT scan. Mm -hmm. and I think that would be the best way. Okay. Yeah. And in the, if a patient gets one CT scan, you actually already know if they have developed uh, a, a CT scan can probably pick up about 90 to 95% of lung cancers. Oh, wow. okay. uh, in fact, there are certain countries which have run screening programs mm -hmm. using CT scans mm -hmm. or low dose CT scans to detect lung cancer before they become symptomatic, oh, before wow. the patients develop symptoms. Okay. So they've targeted patients who've had a long standing history of smoking mm -hmm. and they've done CT scans and they've managed to pick up lung cancers before the patients develop symptoms. Okay. Uh, the caveat to that is a lot, a lot of people required to be screened and it's a huge resource implication for the countries involved. So this, this would happen in which country? Uh, there was one trial run in Europe and mm -hmm. one trial run in the, in the States. Can we see both, that thing in Malaysia? Both, both the results have been published. Mm -hmm. uh, in Malaysia, I think we, of course, we face certain challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the resource implications of actually, actually doing the CT scans. Mm -hmm. And the second would be, uh, the CT scans will probably pick up quite a lot of uh, changes in the lung, which are not related to lung cancer. So not all changes in the lung is lung cancer, correct? No. Okay. Uh, now, when we want to move on into, after the patient has gone through that and actually diagnosed them to have lung cancer, what is the next step? Okay, so the, f the first step, as I said, would be to uh, to see where the tumour is, and mm -hmm. that's, that's a CT scan, mm -hmm. or sometimes a PET scan mm -hmm. we use. The next is to get some tissue from the actual tumour mm -hmm. to try and work out whether this is non-small cell or small cell and within non-small cell, what subtype of non-small cell lung cancer it is. Mm -hmm. So that will involve a biopsy. Mm -hmm. A biopsy is either done externally, so you insert a needle into the lung to remove some of the tissue or internally. So a lung, a lung specialist would put a scope mm -hmm. down into the lung mm -hmm. to access some of that tissue. Okay. So once we've worked that out, uh, we also need to stage the patient carefully. That means to make sure that the tumour, uh, or to, to, to define the location of the tumour within the body. Okay. So that will involve an MRI scan of the brain, mm -hmm. to scan the brain, and also a CT scan or a PET scan preferably mm -hmm. of the body. Okay. Now talking about that staging, um, how many stages of cancer are there and which stage where you actually if you get that stage, it's there's no turning back. Okay, so I'm sorry to be so morbid about it, but we have to talk about that. Oh, yeah. uh, sure. I think, I think um, so. Cancer is divided into four stages, and okay. it's the same across the board. Okay. Whether it be lung, colon, or, uh, or breast. So stage one is generally when the tumor is is quite sm relatively small mm -hmm. and just located in one region. Mm -hmm. Stage two, when the tumor is bigger or has spread to some of the lymph nodes mm -hmm. uh, near the middle of the chest or the heart. Mm -hmm. Stage 3 is when the tumour is quite big and has spread to quite a number of lymph nodes. And stage 4 is when it's spread outside of the lung area mm -hmm. 
and into other parts of the body, for example, the liver, the bone or the brain. Mm, okay. So w from stage one to stage three, our aim of treatment is still curative. That means we're delivering treatment with intensity in order to get rid of the tumour mm. uh, permanently. Mm -hmm. For stage four, what we're trying to do is to control the tumour for as long as possible. Mm. Uh, but we don't tend to use the word cure mm. in that setting. Okay, all right. Thank you, Doctor, so much. Uh, I think we'll talk more about this. Uh, we'll go for a short break. Uh, this is Health Matters with me, Dishikumar, and today's episode, we're talking about lung cancer. We'll be back right after this.